Hello everyone, this is Professor Basim Shaban once again with uh, the show A Touch of Faith and today we're understanding uh, Judaism. So today we have a special guest, Mr. Gary Becker, who's going to introduce us to a little bit about uh, Judaism and its history. So help me thank uh, Gary for his time. So thank you, Gary, for joining us. Uh, let's uh, jump right in. Uh, the first question is, uh, tell us a little bit about Judaism from your perspective. And I, I thank you for the opportunity that I was sent the questions in advance so I could do a little bit of preparation. So I apologize for a little script reading for all those who were seeing this, but I wanted to make sure I covered the content. Uh, Judaism is the first of the Abrahamic faith and the first organized religion to believe in the concept of one God that is merciful rather than vengeful. Uh, Judaism emerged from cultures that believed in multiple gods, worshiped idols, and in which some pagan cultures practiced human sacrifice. None of these practices are permitted in Judaism. In entering into a covenant or agreement with God to follow a series of commandments, Judaism emerged as an ethical religion based on all people being created equal and both Jew and non-Jew. Through religious laws that developed over time, these laws affected civil laws, such as defining crimes and punishments, the fairness required in maintaining accurate weights and measures, entering into contractual agreements with other individuals, and respect for individual rights. Judaism does not view itself as superior to other faiths, but rather as an example of a religion that recognizes that there are many pathways to God from which people can choose, and all of these pathways are legitimate. Judaism is a non-conversionary religion in that it doesn't seek to convert others from their beliefs. For those seeking out Judaism as a religion of choice, conversion is available. Very good, very thorough. <laughs> so what is the one thing uh, out of many, I'm sure, that uh, you know, for Jews that their faith affects them in their daily life and family life? Well, that particular question in terms of how it affects myself and my family, and that is how I personally treat other people on a daily basis and how I accept my family members and friends and those who I come in contact with. Uh, my religion focuses on accepting others and reaching out with compassion, empathy, and taking action to make the world a better place. I am very aware in my daily efforts of how to act and react to other people and try my best to be understanding and fair in my relationships with my family and with other people with whom I come in contact. It's especially important to add that word, listen, to listen to others and not just tell them what I think ought to be done, but to listen and hopefully react and be supportive to their point of view. And based on that, can you tell us a little bit about the uh, congregation you represent? Uh, my congregation is a reform congregation, one of the four major divisions of Judaism, and we are physically located in Orlando on Malone Drive, just west of I-4, off of Lee Road. And uh, the reform tradition, as it has now become, was founded in Germany in the early 1800s and with German immigrants that came to the United States, established itself and really grew here even more initially than it did in Europe. Very good. Now, based on Jewish tradition, uh, what would you say about the nature of God within Judaism? Well, one of the things that we believe in terms of the nature of God is that actually Judaism has many different names for God, and that is because those names reflect characteristics that we as humans attribute to God and in turn, uh, affect how we perceive God. We believe God has the characteristics of a creator, a beneficent ruler, a parent, a judge, a role model, and is present everywhere in the universe. God knows all things, past, present, and future. God is eternal, and God is just and merciful. God is incorporeal, meaning that is without form, and as such, God is not defined as a male or a female. However, due to the influence of a male-dominated society in the early founding of Judaism, God is often referred to as he during prayer. In our more modern times, God is often referred to as he or she or without any gender uh, identification. 
Many of the new prayer books used in the conservative reform and reconstructionist branches of Judaism have become overall gender sensitive. Very good. And then the last question I have is, what is your view about the afterlife? Ah, very good question. My beliefs in the afterlife are pretty consistent with the general beliefs of Judaism. We believe that there is an afterlife that we refer to as Olam Haba, the world to come, but Judaism places very, very little emphasis on this afterworld. In fact, very little is found in our texts that make reference to it, since Judaism's emphasis is on this life, on this planet, and what we do to improve the living conditions and the treatment of others while we live here, without the aim of doing that for the reason of gaining an afterlife, but rather to improve the world and leave it in better condition for the next generation of people that come along. So what I do on a daily basis is not done to achieve a place in the world to come, but rather to improve the world through my actions and how I relate to other people. Well, very good, thank you very much. So help uh, me thank Gary for his time. And we'll be right back with the next segment. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is our uh, current events section. So uh, look forward to getting you insight into some of the stories taking place in the world of Judaism related to the social issue that we're covering, uh, which is environment. Uh, this story comes out of um, Toronto. Beekeepers from Toronto's environmental education group called Shoresh are selling honey at their annual Rosh Hashanah markets. Primary uh, beekeepers, Sabrina Malak, says that as, Jew, as Jews, we have a responsibility to take care of our planet, not only for our own rituals, but in order to maintain our traditions. We need to have a healthy eco ecosystem. Without bees, the food system wouldn't exist. The process of pollination is responsible for more than 90 crop varieties people eat every day. Sabrina Malak, uh, her mission has focused on becoming and becoming to create a refuge where bees can thrive. She has gotten the help of Toronto's Jewish community, Toronto's environmental education group, and Bee Refuge called Shoresh uses experimental education to introduce the community to the idea that Jews have a deep connection to the earth, land, and sustainability. They run school programs, community gardens, and host field trips. They partner with Jewish organizations working with seniors and at-risk community members. Shoresh is part of an umbrella uh, network, the Jewish Outdoor Food Farming and Environmental Education, which just like Shoresh, works to link the natural world to Judaism through hands-on experiences. Sabrina Malak uh, Malak says, there is a Jewish food movement that is looking into how Jewish traditions are based on agricultural realities. She points, of course, to the Torah teachings that every creature has a purpose. Our next story, uh, Minding the Environment, Hazen Inspires Environmental Change. The Jewish nonprofit organization Hazen is inspiring more sustainable and healthier communities. The organization launched the Seal of Sustainability, which offers a roadmap to environmental health. One of Michigan's synagogue's goal is to purchase recycling bins, which was made possible by Hazen. The synagogue has also switched to LED lights in its halls with more changes in the works. A congregation in West Bloomfield, which is another seal of sustainability site, ranks sustainability efforts high in its list of priorities. Hillel Day School is also getting on Hazen's program by cleaning up the wetland and pond area behind the school. Rabbi Herschel Finman is leading Jewish Fer Ferndale to become the greenest building and plans to go solar. Detroit Jews for Justice recently joined Hazen and has near zero waste events at its gatherings. The, the group currently has water justice as its campaign. So these are two great stories of what the Jewish community uh, in Toronto and Michigan is doing related to, to climate change. We'll be right back with our final fun facts. So this segment is our uh, fun facts uh, related to Judaism. 
Uh, Judaism emphasizes our need to preserve our natural resources and generate new ones for future generations. Uh, with that, the Torah prohibits the extinction of species and causing undue pain to non-human creatures. The Torah also prohibits the wasteful consumption of anything. Environmental justice is a Jewish value, and the Judaist concept of tekun alam emphasizes that the perfection or fixing of the world is in our hands. That's our show for uh, today. We look forward to seeing you on another segment of A Touch of Faith. Take care. Love, love, love.